Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about some of these inference techniques that we already know about, but what do we do when our mean is our parameter of interest, but maybe we don't know sigma. Alright, so remember where we're going. We are, we know what inference is. Right? We talked about point estimation, confidence intervals, hypothesis test. We've got all the rationale and the, the basic ideas of those down already. We're moving down this list, and we're starting with x-bar estimating mu. The main thing that we've seen before is when mu is my parameter of interest, and the central limit theorem checks out, we can do z confidence intervals and z hypothesis tests. All right, so you should feel pretty comfortable with the basics of those down. When we were going through and demonstrating the basics. Now, it's, the z-distribution is easy to use, and it's easiest to demonstrate these ideas with the z-distribution. But when we were going through that, we kind of made some unrealistic assumptions, specifically that we know sigma, right? Because we know that we're trying to use x bar to estimate mu. By assuming we know sigma, that's, that's kind of not a very logical step to make because we need mu to calculate sigma. So if I'm trying to figure out mu, I probably don't know sigma either. All right, well, we know when we don't know sigma, we can use s to estimate it and use the t distribution. Okay, so again, please watch the video on the t distribution if you haven't seen that yet. All right, so let's sum up everything we know about a mean. We know that when we're kind of thinking through these inference ideas for the mean. We know when we know sigma, here's where our central limit theorem comes in, right? If our population's normal, we're in good shape for any sample size. If our population's not normal, we're greater than 30, right? So then it was, well, what if I don't have information about the population for small samples, right? That is where our T comes in, okay? So this is kind of summing up all this stuff that we already know. Right? So let's think about confidence intervals first. So again, summing up our Z confidence interval, the, the basic format of a confidence interval is your point estimate plus or minus your margin of error, where your margin of error is made up of your critical value times the standard error. Right? This gives us this basic form. So if our central limit theorem holds and we can assume normality, X bar has a normal distribution, center that mu, standard error of this, and then our confidence interval formula looked like this. Well, let's apply this Z versus T logic. I can use these to create Z intervals in all of these situations where it's appropriate to assume normality up here. Right, but what if it's not appropriate to assume normality? Specifically, what if I don't know sigma? Well, basic format of a, a confidence interval, we do know that. Looks like this. If we can't assume normality though, then we're saying, okay, well the sampling distribution of the sample mean must have a T distribution. Centered at mu still, but the standard error is a little bit different, S over root N. With the T distribution, we also have to bring into play degrees of freedom. All right, so rather than building a T confidence interval, we'll build, or sorry, rather than building a Z confidence interval, we'll build a T confidence interval. All right, so that, that looks a lot like the formula we saw before. Differences, S instead of sigma. And we've got a T critical value instead of a Z critical value. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to use the T table to find those critical values rather than the Z table. So we'll see how to do that in our example video. All right, so I think that's, that's pretty intuitive. We already know about Z confidence intervals. We already know about the T distribution. So just applying that idea here. All right, what about hypothesis tests when we don't know sigma? Well, what you'll find is for any hypothesis test, no matter your parameter of interest, these steps are exactly the same. Just like for any confidence interval, the format of that confidence interval is exactly the same. All right, so our steps are still the same. And our, our logic is still the same. Should I use the Z versus T thing? All right, we know 
what a Z hypothesis test looks like. And really the only thing that changes is the, the format of your test statistic. Okay, we know our test statistic looks like this, especially the Z test statistic. It was whatever you observed minus the mean over the standard error. That tells you how far away is what I observed from the mean. Okay, so the central limit theorem held our Z confidence interval looked like this. What if I do not know sigma? Right, we know the general structure of our test statistic. If we don't know sigma, we're estimating with S, so we're replacing sigma with S in our formula, and it will be a T test statistic. All right, so we're going to apply these ideas in application videos coming up. Thanks for tuning in. Check out those application videos.